This is page 102 of St. Angel Exposed. It says, This new greater deliverer, while following after the Baha, was thus to be the Baha'u'llah, splendor of God. It is strange how these cults pattern so much of their theories on previous religions in their area. While Islam believed that Muhammad was the last and most important prophet, Baha'i arriving on the scene some 1,200 years later stated that it has the last prophet. Both religions competed with each other in our ring. Right, so we're going to guess it. We're going to uh, show how that Islam is a lot. So we'll be able to shoot Muhammad today and the Baha uh, leader, which he being shot this whole lesson, but Muhammad got a little piece in there. So we'll show how they teach the lie to connect Islam with Christianity. All right, uh, this uh, this Matthew twenty four twenty seven. They they use this scripture when I was in the uh, Ahmadiyya uh, Islam movement. They use the scripture Matthew twenty four twenty seven. Uh, as with uh, group of them, I've not because right. he's also a promised Messiah. Right. In the same rural area where. Uh, where these two guys came out, Muhammad and uh, the Baha'i faith. I say, as for the lightning coming out of the east and shining even unto the west, so shall the son of so shall also the coming of the son of man be. They trying to say that they trying to say that they all uh, say Hazrat Blue Ahmed already came. Which that's bullshit. If he if he would have came, then this whole this whole like this whole society be wiped out. So to jump back up to um to the twenty fourth verse, it says, "For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, in so much they in, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect." Nope. Right, well, it wasn't possible. Go ahead, right, yeah. right, because they was going around deceiving the elect, man. Like the ones that was in his, in his in his bullshit re religion. Obviously, that the Lord chose the elect out of that religion. Right? Yeah, yeah, because like it says, if it was possible. So since we know it's not possible, because we are brothers that came up out of there. So do we know we the elect? No, but as you gonna act and work like it, yeah, work out thy own salvation, yeah. make thou election call. Call it, call it election shift. Right, yeah. see that? So you're supposed to act like it. So we're going to go to Second Ezra and actually give the, I mean, not Second Ezra, it's Baruch 4 and 36. All right, this is Baruch chapter 4, verses 36. It says, O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east. Right, O Israelites, look about thee from the east. That's where we originally come from. And behold, the joy that cometh unto thee from the Most High. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. They come gathered together from the east to the west. Right. So that's what that's talking about. So just like when they say in Matthew 24, 27, for as the lightning coming out of the east and shining even unto the west. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be here when that lightning come from the east into the west. So you want to be here when Baruch 4 and 36 lightning come from the east and the west. Because what it's going to do? It says, by the word of the Holy One. By the word. That's why via internet, the Europe in the Thorn has been broadcast north, south, east, and west. Huh. So how is the, the elect going to be gathered? By the word. Now after the word gathered the elect, now we're going to show y'all what's going to happen. Matthew 24 and 24, 27. For as the light cometh out of the east and shining even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Yeah. So you better have his word. For wheresoever the carcass is, no matter where your body at, your body at, mm -hmm. and this is, and I'm giving, now I'm talking to um, Bubble Eye Blackfish behind that bullshit he pulled with sending them brothers to that uh, nuclear waste dump site in Israel. Yeah. And, and, and this for uh, y'all dumbass. So all you niggas who follow Bubble Eye Blackfish, this why you didn't have to go. Only in the moment. For Israel. Matthews 24 and 28. For wheresoever the carcass is, there there will the eagles be gathered together. <laughs> So no matter where your body at, the UFO going to pick your black ass up. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Nuclear missile. Yeah. And the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven. The powers of heaven shall be shaken. Yeah, uh, this is Isaiah 66 and 15. This is what the Lord will come back to do. It says, for behold, the Lord will come with fire. 
and with his chariots like a whirlwind. So there's the light, there's the thunder. Right? <laughs> yeah. So render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Yeah. So that nigga, he ain't coming back with that. No. He, 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 they trying to come Remember, back with this whole peace. He's supposed to already be. Right, right. So right. what happened to the, the thunder and the, 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 the vengeance, the anger, the fire? What happened to all that? Right. Exactly. I got nothing. What happened to uh, okay. so-called hell, as y'all want to call it? We just want to hit Islam and then so. jump to the other sect of uh, his immaculate conception right. of how yeah. he got out of the, how he got out the line fire of the bullet. Yep. This is uh, back in page 103 of St. Angel Exposed. It says the bad and the young and my, ad, the, the bad and the young admirer admirer were suspended by ropes from a nail in the prison yard. The soldiers, seven hundred and fifty of them, aimed their rifle and shot. When the smoke cleared, the bad had disappeared and the youth was seen alive and harmed. So he just imagined ma managed to dodge seven hundred and fifty soldiers. Bullets disappear. Bullets. And translucive his body back into his cell and save the little boy at the same time. He's supposed to be and you mean tell me they fire all them bullets. Right. So you, all them soldiers with all that musket gun, you can just imagine you can see nothing after the fire. Right. So after the fire, he gone and the little boy ain't got hit. Right. So he must did a kneel to all the bullets. Right. And it's open and disappeared at the same time. Right. Yeah, he's supposed to be uh, down on the line again. Yeah, yeah. It's a magical shit. It was soon discovered that the shots had only severed the rope. The bad was found back in the cell. So he took all the bullets that they shot at him and formulated like a, a magneto. Right. And <laughs> guided him to hit the rope. And he went back to his cell. So we're going to show you where he got that from. This is Matthews 27 and 50. Yahweh shot when he had cried again with a loud voice, yield up the ghost, and beheld the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top and the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watched, the Harishah saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this is the Son of God. And many women were there beholding afar off, follow, uh, which followed Yahweh Shah from Galilee, ministering unto him. So, that's the point. So, that's where they get all this mystical stories from. They got to align themselves with the true power, Yahweh Shah, and plagiarize stories from him. Text from him okay. and put it into them and make themselves these mystical people. Mm -hmm. And we say time and time again, why does every book have to revert back to the scriptures? Because every single scripture is life, it gives off a, a vibration. Yeah. yeah. So if anybody else got a story of the scriptures of um uh, of what spirituality, if you can if you call it, it always like a uplift you or make you want to praise that thing even more. Yeah. Because the scriptures is that 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 true um, righteous spirit. Yeah. The truth. Yeah. Okay. Now, then we'll be done with that, and we're going to need to go ahead and All right, one ninety-seven. Yeah, one ninety-seven. Which one? Okay. This is um Masonic coat and symbols illustrated. Yeah, we're it says delegates attended some coming from behind the iron curtain and even as far afield as Iceland. There is a S U N Sun Center in Detroit, S I C, and groups in Chicago, Atlanta, Costa Mesa, California, um, Bolaweo, Rhodesia. Yeah, Odessa. Oh, Odessa, New, Ze New Zealand, and many in South Africa, November 1968, to formulate a new age world religion to complement the new world order of Aquarian age. That's another name for it. The illustration above appears in one of the sun's pamphlets. Sun also has an interesting logo on the 
stationary. Note the point inside the triangle and in this triangle, the circle, the seven-pointed star, and a twelve-pointed star are enclosed by a circle. Another group working to bring all cultures and relations together is the Unity and Diversity World Council, UDC. Previous names from this same group are International Corporation Council and Unity and Diversity Council. The Unity and Diversity Council is a powerful New Age promotional network which in 1982, DLC, linked arms with the International Network of Mind, Body, and Spirit Festivals. This formed a vast army dedicated to the merger of all religions in, into one. Under a world leader, they have, pro they have produced a directory for a new world. Their purpose is to foster the emergence of a new person and civilization based on the dynamic integration of diversities among all peoples and all life. Their website states, the methods we use are based upon our research for universal moral and spiritual principles. We welcome the coming together of all races, cultures, and religions, in all caps, into unity and diversity type of community, both local and around the world. Their activities include interfaith celebrations. Okay. Since September 1995, since September 1995, this world interface interfaith network has been meeting a religious and spiritual center around Los Angeles, such as the Vedanta Society, the Islamic Center, the World Peace Prayer Society, and Moron. I mean, Mormon temple <laughs> celebrations, including meditation and messages from the different faith groups, um, unity and diversity world council. Leland P. Stewart was the founder of unity and diversity world council. On May 10th, 1998, he spoke at the tourist, the tourist WESAC festival sponsored by the Los Angeles inter intergroup. Before mentioning some of Stewart's remarks, I think it is necessary to explain what the WESAC Festival is. The group of creative meditation tells us. Held in a solar month of Taurus at the full moon of May, this festival honors the Buddha, the Lord of Light, messengers of the East. It is the great living avatar who brings the light of illumination from the center of where, where the will of God is known. Closer to humanity, during WESAC, we are remained, right, we are reminded that it is the will of God to awaken humanity and reveal its true purpose on earth. And this honors the Buddha. Now, did they say that the Lord was supposed to be a, well, he was a monk or he went into um, India, India, uh, India yeah. and yeah, yeah, with the whole Buddha crap. That's why he's got to have some connection to him. You can't get you, you bait you in. Exactly. That's why I said the Lord of the Light, messenger of the East. Yeah. He's somewhere. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> they say, um, during we, we said we are reminded that it is will of God to awaken humanity and reveal its true purpose on earth. Years, year after year, the forces of light make an effort at WESAC to increase the flow of enlightenment into the world and to throw the light of wisdom and understanding into the minds of men. Right, so that's an ongoing process. So it ain't no, like, converting thing. Mm -hmm. They don't need you to convert. They just need, to, you be, they just need you to become acceptable to exactly. other people. They don't need you to convert. They're not looking for that. That's far from what they need. They just need your spirit to be mindful of other people. Tolerance. Right. Yep. Um, as, long as, they can, as long as they can get you over to tolerance, right. when they bring in that hammer to go without food, to yeah. go without things, and to denounce your God, because you have tolerance, you're going to denounce it. Yeah. Because you don't have no faith, you don't have no strength That's on what right. you believe. Because yeah. you shake it. That's yeah. like Ephesians 4 and 14 carried away with everything that's done to you. Yeah. 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 Building that tolerance, weaken your uh, faith and your strength. Go ahead, be You got that up? Come on. Go ahead, bro. All right. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 11. Yea, speedily was he taken away, mm -hmm. lest that wickedness should alter his understanding. 
Yeah, and that's what this is talking about. This is the wickedness that I also understand it. First beginning with the religions and then trickle on down to accepting all religions. Yep. Go ahead. Or deceit the guy on his soul. Right, and this is nothing but deceitfulness. Because one, you deceive by one religion, and then they want to get you to conjure up and accept all religions. So yeah. you getting more demons put on you by accepting all these different gods. Yeah, because that's a spirit. That's kind why of. when your brother say you're getting a demon, that's exactly what that is. Yeah. Go ahead. For the bewitching of naughtiness, dark, obscure things that are honest. Yep, and that's what exactly what it is. This is the bewitching. That's why the guy, um, um, Beverly Randolph, he he's a um, he he's a, a trans. Uh, what they call him a median. Yeah, yeah, he's a trans -median. So he deal with the trances, putting people in trances, yeah. the witchcraft, hallucination. Then on top of that, he deals with the spirits to back them up with. Yeah. And there go your bewitch. Go ahead. And the one and the wonder of concupiscence mm -hmm. doth undermine the simple mind. Yep. So the the uh, oh the sexual lust. That's what the concupiscence is. Mm -hmm. Is the sexual lust of everything. Mm -hmm. It deals with sexual magic as well. So exactly. Like Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 okay, that's it. Okay, going back into this. Page 199. It says, um, it says, until the minds of men, I'm going to start back with Tad. Year after year, the forces of light make an effort at WESEC to increase the flow of enlightenment into the world and to throw the light of wisdom and understanding into the minds of men which is their philosophy. If the, if the demand from humanity is strong enough, mentally powerful and adequate focus, the forces of enlightenment can be invoked and brought forth into human affairs. See that? That's the book. So basically, the two other things you can read. Okay. So I can keep you fresh because you can read how and do it. Okay. That's how they do it. They gave you the philosophy every year. Every year they come right in and they got that same agenda. Just keep pushing. We're going to get some of them. We don't need all of them. Yep. This is, says the symbol for enlightenment. The festival is referred to as the supreme moment of the year. Tom Carney says that Waysack is a wonderful time to talk about the rising sun. For that is what the festival is all about. It is about the eye being single and the whole body being full of light. It is about yeah, the use the scriptures again. Yep. It is about the impact of will upon the dedicated servant. A single eye, a single will. That's the all seeing eye. Yeah. It says a symbol representing the three linked meditation festivals of spring, one of which is the festival of Waysack, appears below as wicker, as witchcraft. It says it was at this festival in honor of Buddha, where Stuart commented. In preparing for my remarks today, I took the trouble to locate all of our Alice Bailey books and to look them over, especially the one entitled The Externalization of the Hierarchy. What I discovered was a number of areas of common ground with the work of the Unity and Diversity World Council. I'd like to mention a few of those areas now. I discovered that synthesis is a very important term in the Alice Bailey's teachings. In these teachings, the Buddha represents light, the Buddha being the illuminated one. The central goal of these teachings is to help give birth to a new world religion. Yeah, new world order. Because that's what, like the elder said, not only, like we keep saying new world, I mean, new world order, but what it consists of is components. Mm -hmm. It consists of a new world government, mm -hmm. it consists of a new world religion, mm -hmm. and it, it consists of a new world order. Mm -hmm. It also consists of a new monetary system. Mm -hmm. Them three components make up shit, your world. Mm -hmm says all of these dimensions resonate with our work the meaning of unity and diversity in this arena is they working on all three of these simultaneously they pulling the strings on all three avenues from this one religion this one government from this one monetary system mm -hmm. that's why they devalue the money and everything it says the meaning of unity and diversity in this arena is to serve both the synthesis which we call the unity and also to pay close attention to the diversity which each aspect of the unity represents. Let me just comment on the Wisak festival itself in that regard. Wisak in Buddhism symbolizes the birth, life, and death of the Buddha. In addition, that's to the that's the uh, that's the uh, rebirth. Mm -hmm. That's the um, 
Phoenix. Father the Son. Phoenix. That's the Trinity. Yeah, yeah. See, they think yeah. they slick, but how they, right. but how they yeah. see how he keep trying to use Buddha, but that Buddha go back to Christianity. Yeah. Right. Goes back to the Roman Catholic Church, the yeah. Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the three Trinity, which go back to witchcraft. We go back to the Queen of Heaven, yeah. the worship of Queen Mother Earth. Yeah. yeah. But see yeah. how they see how they phrasing it under Buddha? Hmm. They keep saying Buddha, but it got all Christian tricks and ties. To it. <laughs> if the eye is single, then the whole body. And what he doing is, is what's that guy's name? Because what he doing is, is he telling you about, basically he converting people who believe into Buddha into accepting Christianity. Tom because, Hardy. Right, Tom Hardy's doing a good job. Sheep. Yeah. There's one more picture. Right, right, it says, There's one more picture. It says, in addition to Buddhism and Christianity, we need to pay close attention to Judaism, Islam, Taoism, Confucianism, and a host of modern spiritual movements such as Baha, Vedanta, and the like. All of them are making their contribution to the religious life. The New World Religion is also a focus of common ground. We have been working on world scripture. See? See? No, no. And they using yeah. from all the texts. No, that's how you're yeah. getting you to accept hearing texts from the Quran, mm -hmm. texts from the Bible, mm -hmm. scripts out of Buddha. Mm -hmm. they they getting you used to having a book that literally got Bible verses, yeah. uh, verses. things out, all mm -hmm. in one blended, though. Right. Like, you got to get used to, like, reading. Um, what you just read, any 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 common phrase of a uh, Christian book. Mm. Yeah, single life, single body. Like, right. You know, just, yeah. Now, right. some in Islam will go with that, but it won't be that. And they'll right. yeah. they merge together, and they plan on writing these books, publishing them, print pressing them, and distributing them on a large that's scale. Why, that's but you know, what like, you know when that's going to be, though? It's going to be when they do what's called re-education center. Yeah. And when they get your ass behind them concentration camps, it ain't gonna be no option about what you gonna be. They're gonna sit your ass down, give you a book or a pamphlet, list. and it's gonna actually say this is a re education center and you gotta learn these scriptures yeah. or yeah. texts. Yeah. And also they're preparing So get ready for that book. They're preparing the people to scramble your mind. Which I don't plan on being no motherfucking concentration camp. Yeah. Cause as soon as I go, I'm gonna tell them straight out. Which they already know in that safe, which I'll talk to them on the phone. My call is one of the best. Yeah, like, I, had, for this to be like that. I had a game diversion. You know, that's basically almost the same format. They go, basically, you got to uh, you gotta yell off the, uh, the their, their merits, like, every day. Mm -hmm. Like, their laws and shit every day. Mm -hmm. So that's that's basically what they have to do. Right, and the brother right, because they do it actually in boot camp. They have you where you have a card in your hand that got like 15 laws on it. And every day you have to study them laws. And any officer can walk up to you after a week of you being there. And if you don't know any of them laws, you get severely punished. Severely. So trust me, you're going to learn. It says we have been working on the world scripture since the 1950s as a document. Yeah, show them in the hand. As a document where people can use and they have to stand there for love and yeah, all yes, yeah. The people can use to learn to live in harmony with our universal heritage. That's it, that's it. Well, y'all getting, y'all getting the story of this whole thing. Like, it keep going, mm -hmm. but that's enough. You gotta, you know, get the book on yourself, do a little research, so forth. Now y'all starting to get an understanding of what this whole Baja thing is about. Yeah. Now we're going to go into some black prominent men that's a part of the Baja thing. You know, we got to touch on mm -hmm. some blacks. Yeah. That's what we write without knowing some black nigga sellouts. Mm -hmm. All right. Number one sellout name is Elaine Leroy Locke. Which was a part of the uh, Harlem, Harlem Renaissance. Renaissance yeah. But you're going to read it to it if it's tell about it. It says... Um, Elaine Lee, Leroy Locke was an American writer, philosopher, educator, and a patron of the arts and a popular uh, pub publication, The Black Hundred. Elaine Locke ranks as the 36th most influential African American ever past or present. Distinguished 
st distinguished as the first African American Rhodes Scholar in 1907. Locke was the philosophical, 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 philosophical architect, the acknowledged dean of the Harlem Renaissance. See that? He was the dean. Oh, dean just, is like yeah. third in command. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's who the dean is. The, yep. dean, the, the dean is like the overseer. Yep. He the prominent man who everybody knows. And he fit that title. The counselors. The counselors are actually called deans in the school system. Yeah, right under the system. Right under the system principal, yep. Yeah, that's right, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It says of the Harlem Renaissance, a period of cultural uh, efflorence connected with the new Negro. See that the new Negro. Mm. So guess what he bringing in, mm. which I ain't gonna. I'm bust him out when he gets to it. Movement with okay. Connected with the new Negro movement from 1919 to 1934. Locke's important importance as the ideal. Ide ideological genius of Harlem Renaissance is a great historical movement and Im Im immortalized in the Harlem number of the survey graphic 6.6 .6. yeah jump down to uh, the Negro spiritual you see it is it a two above W.E.B. Martin Luther King Jr. okay see that highlighted Martin Luther King Jr. yep yeah, go up to the Negro spiritual. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There you go, girl. Yeah, go, go yeah. up into that. Which lock? Yeah, yeah. Right. A landmark? Start from here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It says, a landmark in black literature, later acclaimed as the first national book of African America. See that? This is mm. the first book for African America here in this country mm. after the Harlem Renaissance. It was an instant success. Instant. Yes. I wonder why. Locke contributed five essays, the foreword, The New Negro, Negro Youth Speaks, The Negro Spirituals, and The Legacy of Ancestral Arts. All right. Sexual right. ass black. We ain't gonna know y'all mm. black. Right. On March 19, 1968, the Rev. Dr. Martin Luther Queen Jr. proclaimed, We're going to let our children know that the only philosophers that lived were not Plato and Aristotle. <laughs> But W.E.D. Du Bois and Alan Locke came through the universe. Right, right. so yeah, those spirits are back. The same sell-off Plato and um, Aristarchy is the same spiritual people coming back, yep. playing a lot again. That's so it. That's them for, and that show you that Esau understand reincarnation. Exactly. Because they coming back, and that's why Martin Luther King made that statement. And he said coming through the universe. Because what that means, they you know the spirit go up yep. to heaven and it comes back down. You know what that was talking about. So we're going to go into why we actually got this guy. Go to the uh, religious belief. Okay. Let me look at the... Let's see here it comes. Okay, it says Locke was a member of the Baha faith. See? One of them niggas. And declared his belief in Baha Bahayu La'a in 1918. It was common to write to Abdul Baha to declare one's new faith. See that? Yeah. So you best believe. That's why he was on top. All as smart as he was, but he seen how elegant that was written. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, I can use him. Yep. So, yeah. He said, I can use him. Yep. And Locke received a letter or a tablet from Abdul Baha in return. See that? Yeah. So that man plugged. He yep. plugged with the man of the Baha faith. Yeah. Baha, most like it. When Abdul Baha died in 1921, Locke enjoyed a close relationship with uh, Shogi Effend, mm -hmm. then head of the Baha's faith. Uh, Shogi Shohai Offend is reported to have said to Locke, people as you, Mr. Gregory D., I mean, Mr. Gregory Dr. Elsmont, and some other dear souls are are as rare as diamonds. Exactly, yep. and he right, because he understand after seeing that Israelite natural gift and talent, yep. that he's one of those men that goes back to Plato now. Yep. So you is priceless. Yep. You only run across men like you every hundred years. Every yep. every every, two, every, two, every two. uh society. Yep. I mean every length of a civilization. Yep. That's a whole motherfucking civilization. Yeah. I don't fuck how many generations you know I'm throwing that motherfucker. 
You only get him once every week, just like you only get the prophet. Okay. Only once in once. That's it. Once you don't keep time. coming. Once yep. in an empire, really. When we come, that end your shit. Right. That's how you know when your your it's over with. Right. That's what I'm saying. The Lord send the prophets down, and they start to declare. That's right. That's how this works. You start it, he declare, and and we tell you what's the next empire. So we the end and the beginning of the next rolling empire. Every time an empire was ending and one was started, we told them. Mm -hmm. Every time. Okay. Yeah. Go to uh his uh that, that yeah, dude. buddy. Yeah. So we mark the end. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can see it straight up. Yeah, you can see it straight up. Okay, now this is uh show guy a fan Rabani. Better known as the uh, show guy Effendi was the guardian and a, a appointed head of Baha Faith from nineteen twenty one until his death in nineteen fifty seven. This is spiritual leader, right? Yeah, that took over. Yep. So he was in the second command when um, Abdul died. And then he became the first. Yeah. It say after the death of Abdul Baha in 1921, the leadership of Baha's community entered a new phase, evolving from that of a single individual to an administrative order with executive and legislative branches. The head of each being the guardianship and the universal house of justice. Uh, Shagai Sha Effendi was exactly. Shagai Effendi was referred to as the guardian and held the explicit authority to interpret the writing of the three central figures of the religion. Right. What's that say? We ain't okay, it's okay. Just showing how this new guy took over. Yeah. Shahai, whatever his name. Yeah. Was. He became first in command. He just basically that what they did is to build in safe gate. So ain't no arguing and bickering among that uh, fake, but we know the UN run it. They just ain't gonna say it. Mm -hmm. They put this guy on, but made him a part of a council. Huh. So he don't need. So there is no sound decisions. It's just being made by a leader of the Baha faith. They actually set up a what? A legislative yep. and a what? Judicial Ex and, executive. and an executive branch. That lets you know that the UN and America, that's they shit. Is that exactly? That's that, they that's, shit. That's, that's, that's telltale signs that no, it's, it's y'all again. Yeah. And then guess who's standing behind them, motherfucker? We just call that. Hmm. Okay, that's it on that. Okay. We're going to go to the other guy. Cell out number two. Yeah. Robert Sangstack, Sangstack Abbott. This is the okay. Okay, this is Robert Sangstack Abbott. Was an African American lawyer, newspaper publisher, and an early African American Baha. Abbott is the founder of the Chicago Defender newspaper and the Bud Billiken Parade and Picnic. Right. Now go to the uh, Chicago Defender real quick. Okay. Just read the top of it. So as he was uh, given a safe haven from the uh, from the south to the north, right. he also was uh, telling us that we have to accept all religions. God love everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Same time. You free nigga, but guess what? God love everybody, right? You right. Yeah. <laughs> Directly from the beast. Right. 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 Hopped right out the mouth. Okay. This is Chicago Defender. The Chicago Defender is a Chicago based weekly newspaper founded in nineteen oh five by an African American for primarily African American readers. You hear about that. In 1919 to 1922, the Defender attracted the writing talent of Langston Hughes, sellout, later Gwen, Gwendolyn Brooks, sellout. and Willard Motley wrote for it. It was published as the Chicago Daily Defender as daily newspapers from 1956 to 2003, when it returned to a weekly format. These people like Bill Cosby, they all look up to people like this. And Langston and, Hughes. Uh, what's and, his name? Yep. The, the messed up here. Uh, uh, the smart intellectual. You know what talking about, about Cornell West? Cornell yeah, Mess. Yeah, that's who they look up to. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this going to be the last little part. Okay. It says, Roll in the Great Migration. The editor and founder, Robert San 
Sandstack. Sandstack Abbott played a major role in influencing the great migration of African Americans from the rural south to the urban north by means of strong, more moralistic rhetoric in his editorials and public uh, political cartoons. yeah political yeah. cartoons like those yeah. those newspapers with the little cartoons of um yeah showing you yeah showing, showing the cartoons us beat, yep. us running yep. the white man with a dog chasing us yep. cartoons and stuff yep. Yeah, Jake, yeah. Jake yep. Yep. yep 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 yeah. move to the west or yeah move, move to the south and move to the north and, and stuff like that translated to the new uh slavery yep. yep. actually they showing you like like a uh, more of a common skit yeah, 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 skit up here, yeah, yeah, cartoon, yeah, yeah. Cartoon and, and they and they even had it going on in Chicago even when we was kids in the seventies, in the eighties. That's the name. Oh, and that piece of propaganda, yeah. by the way. Was okay, okay. By the, I just wanted uh, to go in how it's about the great migration of our yeah. people and cartoons. Yeah, so because so, well, a lot of our people know about that. Yeah, right. they gotta get this extra kick, man. <laughs> this shit. That 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 whole ordeal with the um Bob Billiken parade, that's a whole demonic setup. Yeah. He's in a Baha faith. We right. couldn't go into it. Okay, it says. Yeah, go ahead a little bit more, and then we going to. Uh, okay, it uh, says. <clears throat> Abbott was born on November twenty fourth, eighteen seventy, in Saint Simon's Island, Georgia, although some sources state Savannah, Georgia. From former slave parents, when he was still a baby, his father Thomas Abbott died. Floria Abbott, New Butler, his mother then met and married John Sagan. Saint Sack, who had come to Georgia from Germany in 1869. Saint Sack's background was remarkable. His father, Herman, a wealthy German merchant immigrant, purchased the freedom of a slave woman. Tama, Tama from the auction block in 1847. Subsequently, he married her and John. Their child was sent to Germany to be raised there. After returning to the States, John met and married the German-speaking Flora. John and Flora raised Abbott in a family with a long history of transversing uh, rigid racial boundaries. John was a congressional congressionalist missionary who wrote, There is but one church, and all who are born of God are members of it. I bring you into that whole Bible. Bible. That's why he a part of the Bible. That's why a lot of people say we all the children of God. Exactly, that's what I'm about to say. Yeah. God, uh, God made a church, man made denominations. God gave us a holy Bible, disputing men made different kinds of disciples. Yeah, so they're trying to say that you know it's all about God and basically get back to the Baha and let go of your denomination, and your faith, belief, because we all got the same Bible. Yep. Jamel, he was trying to say that in a roundabout way uh, to me when I was talking to him. I cut right through that. And he was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh. Yeah, oh. Um, biography? Uh, history. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's history. This is uh, from Time Six Societies. This is page 20. It says, a 1949 time cover story captured the last great heyday of the U.S. Masonry. As it described the con convergence of some 75,000 Masons in Chicago to celebrate the Diamond Jubilee of the Shriner Movement in the U.S. at an annual convention. The first big event on the schedule was a parade down Michigan Avenue, the Medina, Illinois. Nobles supported $2,500 worth of the country's leading citizens decked out like Zoas and harem guards, 1,000 chancers. Glee clubs, drill teams, and so on. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because they, not only do they, uh, the drill team, it, it, it just mentioned that the, uh, the, the Shriners, yeah. they be, they ride the little golf carts and yeah. shit, and, and, the, the hats on. Hat and they had the Shriner hats on. We, we witness this all the time, because we used to go, uh, I believe it's the yeah. August 13th, yeah. and every year we used to go to the Bobilicum Parade, because yeah. our cousins are in the, the drill, drill team, and 
Uh, yeah, I was I was in the I was in the um the the parade a couple of times, a couple of years. Yep. And then that's when I <laughs> this is before the truth. I was actually walking right along the side of uh, Barack Obama, <laughs> Barack Hussein Obama. <laughs> so, this is before the truth. <laughs> Actually, being in the truth, you could have cussed his ass out. Uh, okay. Let's we'll get this use the scriptures. Uh, yeah. It's still going? Yeah. No, it's still, it's going. still going. It's still going. It says Matthew what? Okay, there we go. It's just going out. This is Matthew chapter 12 of uh, the history. This is Matthew chapter 12, verses 30. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth the, scattereth the broad. Right, like that's what the, uh, these people, these prominent black uh, sellouts did. All right, they, they ain't with the Lord, so, so they, they scattered the, uh, right. the sheep. They ain't teaching the people that they Israelite. They teaching them to be whatever religion you want to be. Yes, it's Proverbs chapter eleven, verse twenty-one. Though hand joined in hand, jo though hand joined in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. Right. So Robert Stack was named Sin Stack. And mm -hmm. Alan uh, Key or Rocky, whatever his name is, he might he might want to join him with this society and be able and you know get you blacks to be a part of American society, but the scripture states otherwise. Mm -hmm. So and join the hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. The Edomites still get made judgment. That's right. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Right, the seed of the righteous. That's those of us the elect who doing this work. Fifteen, fifteen. Okay. Alright, it's proper chapter 16, verse 15. It says, The light of the king's countenance is light, and his favor is in a cloud of a latter rain. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? See that? How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? Uh, the probability of gold. Because okay. this is what they use to indoctrinate a lot of black kids yep. through Robert Stack Gate, whatever his name is, through this Bud Billington club. See, they had a club. They went after you blacks full of flesh. Yep. This is the uh, the Bud Billington it, club. It no, no, one kept, kept going. Oh. Let's say into um, into get understand rather rather be chosen to see. Yeah. Just read it straight through one thing. All right. This back in the. Proverbs 16 and 16. You say, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold? It's, it's better to know this Bible, that's the wisdom, <clears throat> than to get a six-figure job. Mm -hmm. And to get understanding, rather to be chosen than so. Right, it's better to get this understanding than be chosen to be a basketball player run up and down the court mm -hmm. like Kobe Bryant or LeBron James. Okay, this is the Bob Billiken Club. It was a club for black youth in Chicago, founded by the Chicago Defender. Founder Robert Sandstack Abbott and his editor Lucius Harper in 1923. The club was formed as part of the paper's children's page. The Defender Jr. to encourage readership, appropriate conduct, and community involvement in Chicago's youth. Go to the uh, history. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do the history and then the program and the Cause that scripture. Okay. This is Isaiah chapter fifty-four, verse fifteen. It says, "Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me." Right. See that? Y'all gather together with the Chicago Defender Club and mm -hmm. and all these different organizations that are given to Black, Black, and Native Americans. To integrate into American society, but ain't nobody ever give y'all y'all ethnicity, y'all nationality yeah. out of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. This is your rest. It says, Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. See that? So whoever gathered with this American philosophy and society, y'all gonna die. That's right. Trying to fight the power. Y'all shot. That's right. Oh, that's right. 
Okay, this is this is the history. Initially, initially, Abbott had created a day for the mem the youth who sold his newspapers to be an annual November event. Yeah, yearly event. Yeah. In November. Because when the kids go back to school. Yep. Yeah. September, November, yeah. First, these bullshit ass picnics they be having and shit. Yeah, yeah. all over Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, the taste is right around the corner from the raid. Then they usher in bullshit. That's how they and they got it all yep. within yep. the same two, three months. Yep. And yep. well, not only that, but they got the football football starting around the same time. Right. In high school. Oh, and they, they yeah. taking the soldier field and they first game be right there and, uh, to be a rival game. Yeah. See field. that? Yep. That's a way of in, indoctrinating you with the. Uh, luxuries that's of that this world. Wisdom, man. I mean, wisdom. <laughs> wisdom was solid before I left. Yeah. That's it? Mm-hmm. Okay. It says, uh, let me see what I left. Off. Okay. By 1929, the day of standing individual. And they explaining what it's really about. Exactly. In 1935, the club honored Cleotis Brit- Britannium of Holy Springs, Mississippi. For selling more Defender subscriptions than any other uh, Billiken. At the annual parade, Cleotis rode in style on a white and gold float with an American Legion drum and uh, bugle corps broadcasting his ride through the south side. Today, the Bud Billiken is also known as the Bud Billiken Youth. 82, year later, 82 years later, the... Uh, or organization has grown into a year-round program that supports youth with financial and academic help. See that? It's a year-round program. Mm-hmm. They also continue, and that's to, just to keep everybody asleep. Just to keep the uh, Jakes asleep in Chicago. Yeah. It up. Right. Yeah, y'all don't get to do that, man. Y'all expose the shot. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. We busting that whole program out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, it says they also continue to shine the light on outstanding young people that may have otherwise gone unnoticed. Okay, it says each year, each year, there is a Bud Billiken contest to determine the Parker's king, queen, and royal court. The winners are determined based. The winners are determined based on the amount of Chicago Defender subscriptions sold and and a written and oral essay. The contest is open to children ages eight to eleven, and titles include king, queen. Prince, Princess, Lord, and Lady. Though, though all are awarded, the King and Queen receive the grand prize of a trip to Disney World. The winners are announced each year at the Bud Billiken Day Parade and participate in a week of fun, including riding a float in the parade and visiting various places around the city. Around the city... As members of the royal court. Right. Hierarchy. Right. Go one more time. But we're gonna show you what this is really about. And we got this one more scripture, then we're gonna get one more out of it. This is page twenty from the Time Super Society. We're gonna show you it's not about no kids, that was a facade. The nineteen forty nine Time cover story captured the last great heyday of US Masonry. See that that's the heyday of US Masonry, so they needed a parade to be in honor and remembrance of this last day. Called the Bug Billiken. But it's going to stay. As it described the convergence of some 75,000 Masons in See, Chicago. 75,000. To celebrate the Diamond Jubilee. See that? To, to celebrate the Diamond hmm. Jubilee, which come out the scripture. And put what the Jubilee is. When we, on, on, what's it? Of the Shriner Movement in the Diamond Jubilee of Shriner Movement in the U.S. at the annual convention. That's what this was about. Me at a yearly convention. The Bud Parade, yearly. Mm-hmm. The first big event on the schedule was the parade down Michigan Avenue. Mm-hmm. The Medina, Illinois, nobles 
and forty two thousand five hundred dollars worth of new uniforms. And they said Medina. So that's a chapter right out of five percent of the nation. Yeah. With Medina go back to uh the spirit too. Yeah. That uh what's that guy name? Who played Medina? Oh Medina. Yeah, yeah, that's Medina. Yeah, that's Medina. Yeah, that's Medina. It says the country's leading citizens deck out like Zoas and Hiram Guards. 1,000 chances, three clubs, drill teams, and so on. So, from drill teams and black dancing, mm-hmm. for y'all year back to school, uh, welcome here. Y'all just extra. Matter of fact, y'all entertain. Yep. For the, uh, for the who? 75,000. Masons. Masons. The, 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 how can I say it? The, um, Thing. I don't want to say it, but my book got the front gate. Gatekeeper. Oh, the, gate, the gatekeepers. gatekeepers. That's what it is. The gatekeepers to rub they back on what a good year they did on keeping y'all to the next year following the same trend. <sighs> Nothing. So we got you niggas celebrating they on um, victory. They victory they of victory. them keeping y'all killing each other for y'all having the highest divorce rate, the highest killing rate, hmm. the highest unemployment, the highest dropout, the highest abortion, the, the highest abortions. The highest drug use. Hmm. Long them members stay in the police stations. The highest of y'all going to prisons, in jail, incarcerated. Yep. The highest of y'all not having a dual family home. They get to keep their place. Yeah. And they get to look at y'all kids and say, hey, these are motherfuckers who we know ain't going nowhere in the next three years. Yeah. What grade you in? Six? Oh, yeah. We'll see you in prison for a year. I got you on the stock market. Yeah. It's called a secure stock. Yeah. You got a million on your head, a billion yeah, on your yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. That's a curious thought. Million dollars. Yep. So yeah, that's that's the lesson of uh, the Baha and the breakdown of this one world religion that's coming to the whole world, not America. Mm-hmm. It's been pushed through the whole world, and we noticed the end of you know 2013. Anybody got any Yep. That's pretty much it. So closer to a new world order. Mm, closer to our salvage. Yeah, I will. My uncle got this last scripture real quick. Oh, yeah. Isaiah 31. Yeah, Isaiah, this is Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1. Say, Woe to rebellious children, saith the Lord. Right, so all y'all who talking about fuck this lesson and what we talking about, and y'all so called spirit, y'all, I'm sorry, y'all so called leaders y'all look up to, like Abbott. Yeah. Langston Hughes. What do you need to go on? Malcolm, uh, Martin Luther Queen. Lane Lock. Jesse Jackson. Yep. That take counsel, but not of me. Yep. All this demonicness that we was going over, that's the counsel of Satan. That's the counsel of the so-called white man pushing the spiritual demon Satan on you. That that cover with a cover, but not of my spirit. Right. The Baha faith spirit. That everyone should come together spirit. Go ahead. That they act, that they, that they may add sin to sin. Yep. And that's exactly what they doing. Because best believe in that Bubblica parade, nothing but swine getting pushed around, nothing but um homosexuality, um uh, adultery, everything. That's adding sin to sin. And then on top of that you worship in another God. <clears throat> go ahead. That walk to go down to Egypt and have not asked at my mouth the strength of themselves and the strength of Pharaoh. Yep, they strengthen themselves and the strength of Obama now today. That's the uh, modern day Pharaoh. Go ahead. Yep. They can trust in the shadow of Egypt. Yep, and they trust in this world system. They trust in the Bud Billiken Parade every year to come. Go ahead. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Yep, that's why the Baha faith gonna be your shame. Going to that demonic ass but Billiken parade gonna be your shame. Worshiping Islam, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity. That's gonna be uh, the shame. And going to okay. the, going these stupid ass <laughs> picnics, these gang picnics is your shame too. Huh. And the and and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Yep. That's gonna hurt. That's, See, that's what's gonna hurt the most. After knowing you done did everything they said, went to college, did your four years, uh, never got a speeding ticket, never been to prison, don't use drugs, and <laughs> you can't get a job. Like, you working at McDonald's with some kids talking about, you want this joint? Look, look, do you want it? I don't want to sell it to you, but feel like you need to take some stress off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're lying and kind of push back. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So with that, yeah, we're gonna end this lesson with yeah, the um, Baha faith. Yep. So, Kah Halal Yahu Bashim Al Shai, Shalawam La Ha Bacharium, Shaw Yasharala, Kwam Yasharala, Mawath La Babal, Mawath La Babal, Shalawam. Shalawam. Shalawam.